your mid-dive when suddenly you breathe in and there is no more air. You need to ask your dive buddy for help, but they just don't seem to understand all your hand signals. Time is running out. Communication underwater is not well established, which can lead to confusion with a number of different hand signals. Despite this, there is a number of common safety and life-saving signals that every diver should know as a baseline. So in this video, I'll go over the most common hand signals that I've personally used across different regions in the world so that you can confidently communicate underwater. Let's start with the most fundamental signals every diver needs to know to communicate the basic necessities. Picture this, you are 60 feet down, surrounded by a school of barracuda. Your dive buddy looks over at you and you seem a little dazed. They form a sign that looks like a circle formed with a thumb and index finger and the rest of the finger splayed outwards. It's an odd sign and you flash them the best thing you know how to communicate. It's all good. You give them a big old thumbs up and they just shake their head. What went wrong? That's okay. Beginners get this one confused often when they are new to diving. The sign for are you okay and I am okay is not a thumbs up sign, but more like you're trying to form an okay sign of your hand. Sometimes people might just ask if you're okay with a closed, either works. Underwater, you'll use it constantly on your buddy and respond to their checks. In the prior story, your buddy was simply asking if you're okay, to which you want to give them the okay symbol back to confirm. Remember, you're asking okay and responding okay. The okay signal is unique because it serves double duty. It's both a question and an answer. Also, if the environment is dark, you may need to illuminate your hand with your dive torch so that you can clearly show that you're okay. And this also counts for other symbols. And here's a pro tip. When you're at the surface, you'll want to make this signal bigger. Form a ring above your head with both arms or touch the top of your head with one hand. This larger gesture ensures that boat crew can spot you from a distance. If you have a dive torch, you can also signal OK, OK by making a round circle with the torch somewhere that it can be seen easily. Don't be like shining it in someone's face and saying okay, no. Shine it in front of them so they can clearly see and make some large circles with it. Also, a slight rocking side to side is for getting someone's attention. Rapid movements of any kind will indicate that you have a problem. So side to side slowly to get someone's attention. Rapid movements, even with your arms, usually means you need help. Now what if things aren't okay? Imagine exploring a vibrant coral reef and suddenly your mask starts leaking. You're not really sure how to fix that situation and you're having a miserable time. You need to alert your dive buddy quickly. Here's what you do. Extend a flat hand facing downwards and rotate it slowly side to side. This is the sign for I have a problem. Then point to the source of the problem with your index finger. In this case, you point to your mask. I have a problem with my mask. If you're cramping, you can signal that you have a problem. Problem and show the cramping sign and point to your leg. If you're having trouble equalizing, you can show you have a problem and point to your ears. I have a problem with my ears. This signal is a game changer for alerting your dive buddy or your dive leader to issues like equalization problems or suspected equipment malfunction. If you're feeling very cold, you can fold your arms and show a visible shiver, which will tell someone you are uncomfortably cold. This is essentially just looking at someone and visibly showing that shiver. You can even do it with one hand, just kind of like how you do out of water. You can also show that something, your gear, your mask, is broken with two hands and pretending you're breaking a pencil, broken. You can also do this with one hand, still doing the same motion and showing broken.
But communication isn't just about stating problems. It's also about navigation. And that's where directional signals come into play. Let's say you spot a sea turtle off to your left. How do you tell your buddy without words? Simple, point with your thumb in the direction you want to go. It's that easy. Left, right with your thumb. Now here's where it gets a bit tricky. When signaling to go up or down, we use the thumbs in the same manner, up and down. But as mentioned earlier, it doesn't mean okay as one would might think. It means let's ascend and usually to the surface. Usually, this sign is used after the last decompression stop. Now you know why your buddy was shaking their head at you. It's sometimes better to also show a bit of motion with your thumb to clearly indicate that you intentionally mean to go that direction and movement, like left, right, I want to go up, I want to go down. It's also important to note that the thumb really does mean you want to go to the surface or close to the surface. There is better signs than this to say, I want to ascend a little bit or I want to descend a little bit. And we're gonna go over that next. To indicate you want to ascend a little bit, use the motion of a drawing a half moon with your hands. The reverse direction is true for descending a little bit. These simple gestures might seem basic, but they're incredibly powerful. They prevent confusion to ensure your die buddies stay together. Because remember, this can be confusing. Some people mean go to the surface. Maybe they mean go a little bit up, but this one is very clear. I want to go up a little bit. I want to go down a little bit. And usually that's good. So at the surface, usually let's start our dive. And at the end of the dive, let's go to the surface. I think this is just more clear for most people and what I've seen in practical use. To be clear, the dive is being aborted. You want to indicate X. We're aborting the dive. It's very clear. We're aborting the dive and we're going up. This does mean to start ascending and doing all the safety compression stops you need for your own safety. You should never neglect those. Let me share a quick story that highlights just how important these signals can be. On a dive in the Red Sea, my buddy and I were exploring a beautiful wall dive with current. Suddenly, I noticed he was struggling and getting worked up. He gave me the problem signal and pointed behind him. Upon further inspection, his tank slipped out of his cam bands and was pulling his second stage out of his mouth. Thanks to this clear communication, we were able to help him get that strap back into place and keep the dive going strong. Without these signals to the rest of the group, the situation could have escalated potentially leading to outright panic, misjudgment, and disaster. It's stories like these that underscore why mastering these basic signals is so crucial. They're practical tools that can make the difference between a great dive and a dangerous dive. Remember, when you're underwater, your hands become your voice. These basic signals, okay, problem, and directional gestures form the foundation of your underwater vocabulary. They allow you to share experiences, navigate together, and most importantly, keep each other safe. Now that we've covered the basics and how to communicate comfort and direction, let's dive into some crucial signals that could save your life underwater as they relate to that ever so critical air supply. Picture this, you're exploring a stunning underwater cavern, mesmerized by the play of light on the rocky walls. Suddenly, your buddy catches your eye and taps the palm of their hands with two index fingers. They're asking, how much air do you have? In some cases, some divers literally point to and tap their air gauge. To respond, you'll need to know your remaining air level. This is why it's crucial to check your air gauge regularly. Once you've got your number, you'll communicate using your fingers. For example, if you have 120 bar, you'll round to 10 and show one and then two. I will usually start trying to show my count with one hand because that's what I'm used to and that's what I prefer. 
If someone clearly is not understanding, I will use two hands. Also, one small tip, order of your fingers doesn't matter. The most important thing is the amount of fingers holding up. So, you know, three could be this, it could be this, it could be this, you can get creative. It doesn't matter as long as the digits are clearly visible to the person you're showing them to. For example, with the two-handed approach, to show 170 bar, it will look like this, one, seven. For example, to show 170 bar with two hands, it will look like this, one, seven. To show 170 on one hand, anything below six will show your digits pointing up. And anything six through nine will show your digits pointing sideways. To show 2,600 PSI on one hand and rounding to the nearest 100, that would look like this. Two, six, and 3,000 would be three, zero. And just because I want to make sure this is very clear, and I've had troubles with this myself in the past, I want to count to one, 10 bar to 200 bar to show you the differences. I think this will help kind of make sure that you're set to go with these numbers. And I'm gonna use the one-handed method to really kind of pound that in. Starting with 200 bar, 190 bar, 180 bar, 170, 160, 150, 140, 130, 120, 110, just 100. Now I'm down to 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, I am done. And I also want to express for those PSI divers, it's basically the same thing, except for 3,000 will be three, zero. Just drop the last zero at the end. But here's the thing, air checks aren't just a casual chat underwater. They're a vital safety measure. Running out of air is one of the most dangerous situations a diver can face. Regular air checks help prevent this by ensuring you and your buddy are always aware of each other's air supply. These next few signs might sound familiar, but you are communicating easily and quickly with your team on how your air supply is doing. If you're looking down at your air gauge and see that you're halfway full and want to share this with your team, then you would show a sign that looks like a T with two hands to indicate my air is half empty or half full. And it's important to note that half means half of what you started with, not half in terms of your full tank minus your reserve. So if you start with 200, 100 bar would be half. If you're looking down at your air gauge and see that you're closing in on the established minimum gas for the dive, or close to your red reserve on your gauge, then it's not an emergency. It's time to communicate to your team that it's about time to end or dive as you are low on air. You're low on air. Fist to your chest. To show this, it's just a closed fist. It's really just time that we start heading up soon. It's the turning point for your air supply and you have plenty enough to make it to the surface. This next signal is for when things get as serious as it gets. As we mentioned at the start of video, you look down, your air gauge is hovering on or close to zero, or you have a really bad emergency and you just stop getting air out of your tank. It's super hard to breathe, or you just get nothing. I once witnessed a diver give this critical signal during a deep dive. The quick response of their buddy who immediately pulled their main air source right out of their mouth and basically stuffed it right in their partner's face, taking their backup on their neck and plugging it in was a crucial step to saving someone's life. This turned a potential tragedy into a safe ascent. It was a stark reminder why mastering this signal is so crucial. This is the out of air signal where to sign it, you'll move your hand across your throat in a slicing motion, like you're slicing your own throat. You can even accentuate it with two hands to indicate the seriousness of the issue. I am out of air and just go crazy. I mean, it's very clear out of air. You see this, it needs to be handled very fast. That is the biggest emergency that us divers need to be prepared for. It's also important to note that when someone is out of air, the out of air sign is a courtesy. If they don't know the sign or are truly panicking, you can watch their visual anxiety, rapid movements, and 
basically sprinting across the water as fast as they can to the nearest person. This is more of a universal sign for out of air, just outright panic. But what if the problem isn't with your air supply, but with your equipment? If you notice unusual bubbles coming from your gear or your buddies, you can alert them before it becomes a disaster. A small equipment leak can quickly turn into a big problem over time, especially underwater. By catching it quickly and early, you can prevent dangerous situations and potentially save a dive. That's where the bubble signal comes from, and you can sign it by rapidly opening and closing your fingertips like so. Bubbles. Bubbles. And of course we brought up the equipment brake signs earlier, which is one to remember. Finally, this next sign is the underwater equivalent of shouting for help. It's a signal that every diver hopes they'll never need to use, but it's crucial just in case. To give this help sign, wave your hand with both arms frantically. Just look like a lunatic. You can also do this on the surface. Just, just go crazy. Wave those hands like you just don't care. Of course, this signal should only be used in real emergencies. If you're just a bit tired or slightly uncomfortable, other signals we've discussed would be more appropriate. Now that we've covered the essential safety signals, let's dive into some advanced communication techniques that'll take your underwater interactions to the next level. These signals are crucial for coordinating with your buddy and executing more complex dives. Let's start with a little bit of politeness. When pointing at someone, just as you might be above the surface, when you're pointing at someone directly, it could be considered a little bit rude. So when you're pointing at someone, do consider the polite pointing. I'm going to use my whole hand. This is with your hand open and pointed like a karate chop pointing to the person and then directing them where you want their attention to go. Building on this, we also have look and watch me. Signals that are for directing attention underwater. I want you to look over there, over here. Watch me, look at me. This is similar when you point yourself and signaling to look. These signals are fantastic for sharing exciting dive discoveries or important information with your buddy. Let's say you want to communicate to someone, you want them to keep close to you and follow you. Even communicate a group of people to pair up with you and follow. You can point at them, you know, remember to politeness, and then start making fists with both of your hands and extending them. I want you and you to buddy up and follow me this way. Pair with me and go this way. I want you and this person to buddy up and go that way. By pointing in the direction like so, or like so, because I don't need to be polite when I'm pointing not at a person, then you're indicating someone to go that way. Next up is a crucial sign that you need to maintain your current depth, especially during a safety stop when you're trying to avoid decompression sickness. You wave your hand around a circular pattern like this to mean level off. We're gonna level off. This signal is showing an extended flat hand with your palm facing down and move it side to side. It's like you're smoothing out an imaginary surface. This signal is particularly useful when you're diving within a group and need everyone to stay at the same depth. Another useful sign similar to level off is when you hold your hand like this to show someone to stop or you can show a closed fist upward. I tend to do both. Start with open palm and then make a closed fist. When your dive is coming to a close, it will be time to ascend and start your decompression stop. This is a critical part of any dive, allowing you to off-gas the nitrogen safely before you ascend further. The sign is generally just holding up the three digits and a hand on top. This is the sign for safety stop. A three minute safety stop is really just a decompression stop. So you can also express this by showing the three and the sign for deco. We're gonna do a deco stop for three, or I'm gonna do a three minute deco stop. This one is very common. So that one's your golden ticket for communicating safety stop. It's a visual reminder to level off for three minutes and you'll level off at the depth of five to six meters or 16 to 20 feet. I once had a dive buddy who was eager to surface after spotting a whale shark. 
and this signal was a crucial reminder to prioritize safety over excitement. The next incredibly useful sign is when you need to locate your dive vessel, especially in busy dive sites with multiple boats. This is the boat signal. A simple one, just cup your hands together in a boat shape. The sign to show you want someone to deploy a DSMB or you are going to deploy a DSMB is to point and show what looks like an upward explosion with your hand. Boom! Or if you are deploying a DSMB, you can point at yourself and show the explosion. It's not you exploding, you're about to deploy a DSMB. Let me share a quick story that illustrates just how crucial this next signal can be. I was once diving in Indonesia with a local guide. The guide was using some regional signals for local wildlife. You're going to get this all the time. Instead of guessing or ignoring it, I immediately gave I don't understand signal. It turned out he was trying to warn me about a school of poisonous lionfish approaching me from behind. They were really close to my fins. By clarifying, we avoided a potentially dangerous situation. To make this one, just shrug with your hands open and palms facing out. It seems simple, but it's incredibly important. Underwater, it's always better to clarify than guess. There are so many local regional signs for wildlife that it's a good thing to establish with your local dive master so that you can understand what they're pointing out before you start diving. Remember, effective communication underwater isn't just about knowing the signals, it's about using them confidently and consistently. Practice these signals with your buddy before every dive. The more familiar you are with them, the more natural and instinctive your communication will become. It's worth noting, too, that some divers may carry wet notes with them, which does well for communicating complex thoughts. But writing does take some time and is cumbersome over water. Thus, knowing these basic hand signs for basic communication is preferred. We've covered a lot of ground from basic OK signs to critical emergency signals. Each of these hand gestures solves a unique underwater communication challenge, keeping you safe and connected with your buddy. But knowing these signals isn't enough. You need to practice them until they become second nature. Before every dive, run through these signals with your buddy. It's not just a safety check, it's a way of building trust and understanding between you. What's amazing is someday you may be in a situation where you and your buddy or team of divers may not speak the same language. But with these signs, you'll be able to communicate effectively underwater. Another effective and universal thing in the world of scuba is your equipment and its assembly that will lead you to even more success diving anywhere in the world. Check out everything you'll need to know about mastering your equipment assembly in this next video here. Until next time.